All right, guys, so we're going to be covering the weekly candle closure in regards to Bitcoin, what it overall means in the upcoming week or so uh, leading into uh, September overall. We are getting the monthly closure in about, I believe, uh, three uh, three days uh, to be exact. So we're going to look at that early on and, and just see where we could be heading. We're going to be talking about Zen, where I think uh, Zen could be heading in terms of this. We did come back, retest the, the uh, all-time lows for, for Zen there and uh whether or not you should be minting on base and if base really had any meaningful impact in terms of you know the, the launch uh on there uh so let's go ahead and, and discuss the the weekly closure in terms of bitcoin here so we can see that bitcoin did close this particular uh candle uh in a red state now currently we are trading below the 55 and 21 ema now, with that being said, uh, we are going to get a, a retest uh, back to the 55 EMA, which is, you know, sitting roughly around $27,000. If that retest it particular uh, is not able to get us above that critical area, then that's going to be very bearish overall for Bitcoin. And look forward at targets we've been kind of discussing in terms of this uh, around the uh, $22,000 area. First, I would, you know, see Bitcoin really hold around the $24,000, which is the major uh, pivot points that we saw where Bitcoin came down on Bybit. As you can see, it came down around 24237 But focusing on, in particular, just on the Bitstamps chart, because I think, you know, it, has a, it weighs a, a lot more in terms of the other charts because it has more historical context in, ter in terms of that. Uh, but with that being said, we can see if we continue, to, again, to close these weekly candles below the 55 and 21 EMA, the more likely scenario is that we are going to get a crossing uh, uh, and convergence of these EMAs. With that being said, last time we actually saw this convergence happen, we actually dropped roughly around 60%. Now, I'm not saying that that's the scenario that's going to be happening here, but looking at historical data can give us a good indication of what could be possibly happening uh, for future so going back forward just a bit further into this we can see the the cross happened here now this was a, a major black swan event with the cervasis sickness so i wouldn't necessarily count this and um you know just call this as an outlier with that being said in particular to this one we did actually get the crossing here and that actually brought you about down 50 53 percent in particular so we can see that these crossing usually happen and in, in particular with the bear market however i don't want to go into context too much into it i would still like to see an actual test uh, of that particular resistance of the 55 EMA before I can really uh, look at these particular targets and say, hey, Bitcoin can really be dropping 53%. Now, just to per se, if that was the case, where could Bitcoin end up just from these targets alone? Well, you're looking at, um, I don't know, you're looking at $12,000, which uh, is a little bit of an outreach in terms of this. But again, uh, anything could happen. Something can uh, basically trigger the markets to you know, go in a high, high, hiatus uh, uh, type situation, and we can see those type of levels. But for now, we're just focusing on the weekly, and we're going to be getting the monthly closure in just about three days and eight hours. Currently on the monthly timestamp, as you can see here, guys. With that being said, we are trading uh, below the 2001 EMA, coming back just uh, sitting the 55 EMA, sitting around 24,579 well what do you think about that guys so that key area that we've been discussing on bitcoin uh is is coming around uh 24,000 again on the uh what was it uh on the daily as you can see bitcoin came down uh, on bit by bit just around 24,200 so it kind of confluences again with that key area of the 55 as you can see the 55 hasn't really shown up on the buy bit chart that's why i always use Again, the bitstamp chart to get a better indication of where we could be heading. So with that being said, 24,600, guys. So meaning that uh, we came very close, again, to the 55 EMA as a support structure uh, with Bybit. So that's just particular with Bybit, guys. Uh, again, uh, with that being said, again, I'm, I'm looking on the macro time scale, guys. It's 24 key level. If we can't hold that 22,000 below 22,000, I'm really starting to get bearish and uh, more likely we're going to be revisiting the all time lows for Bitcoin. And then from there on, maybe those 12,000 targets are going to come true if that again, that weekly EMAs uh, were to actually cross from there. Now, I am getting a bit too bearish into this. I, I still want to do see the bouncer, guys, because on the lower time frames, if we look at the actual MACD, 
um, we are seeing again we we did see a retest to try to get above the 21 EMA currently getting rejected we still have about an hour and 45 minutes to really get above in particular to that uh, again um, with that being said the pivot points if you look on the three um, on the three day they are coming around 27,719 if you look on the two day they're coming around 26,700 so the more likely scenario look if Bitcoin continues to you know just hover around the $26,000 area uh, you, you can get a bit of a plateau base off of this, but I still don't think we have seen the major downside target for this. I still do see uh, 24,000 playing out and then more likely a scenario where we do see an actual bounce from here. Uh, but again, uh, that's what's currently happening on Bitcoin. We do have some major um, implication in terms of breaking resistance line on the DXY. I did say the next major resistance for the DXY is the 104 area. We are currently trading just above that, which um, again doesn't spell too well for Bitcoin and risk on assets, guys. So this is another reason why I feel so bearish in terms of, you know, coming back down to $24,000. And then maybe DXY finding a bit of a resistance just around the uh, 104, the upper side of 104. And then seeing if maybe Bitcoin can actually bounce off from there. Again, this is these are all the targets we've been speaking about over the past few weeks. Really nothing has changed in terms of that, guys. And there is a major week coming into September again uh, with... Uh, with uh, what's you know what's going to be entailing in terms of uh, the Fed overall, so next week is is going to be filled with a, a lot of things in terms of what's going to be happening. So consumer confidence again, uh, we're going to get uh, core CPI and PPI data to come out as well too. Unemployment rates and and all that stuff can basically affect Bitcoin in in terms of what's going to be going on. So DXY overall implication of those. Uh, so watch out for that. Uh, other than that, uh, let's get into really Zen and talk about it. Um, again, Zen did launch on base, guys. So with it launching on base, how much of an effect can it really have on terms of the Ethereum price? Really not much, guys, because, you know, Ethereum is the main uh, liquidity in terms of this particular crypto asset. Um, and anything else like the smaller chains are really not going to impact Ethereum overall, right? We're seeing people continue to essentially mint on those other chains and really have no meaningful impact because, uh, again, we're starting to see development happening. We saw uh, Phoenix essentially launch on Pulse Chain. Uh, we, we saw we're going to be seeing DBZen essentially come out uh, on Pulse Chain as well too. Uh, DBZ NFTs are coming out. So there is a lot of development happening overall. The majority of it, again, uh, the most hype will be happening on Ethereum if the Ethereum price essentially goes up. It means very well overall for the other Zen ecosystems. But if Ethereum, uh, you know, Ethereum Zen doesn't really go up, then really nothing's going to be happening in terms of even if we see maybe one odd situation where one of these, again, ecosystem Zens like Avalanche Zen or uh, Moonbeam Zen or Pulse Chain Zen starts to do well, uh, that it's going to impact uh, the whole ecosystem. So I, I don't think that's that will be the case. But again, we saw Zen essentially launch on a base network. Again, it's another network that you can go on and, and basically get a head start, a fresh start where you can start minting some NFTs, vanilla mints, and, and really get on there and, and uh, you know, do some of these ladders for the long term. With that being said, how well this is, you know, in terms of this, I, my particular myself, I went in and I started actually minting on here. Uh, I didn't go too crazy, again, because I'm diversified into a lot of these chains in terms of Zen. Do I really need another chain to diversify into? <laughs> not really, not really, guys. Uh, but again, how well this is going to suit and bring some more eyeballs, I think it's good. I think uh, we're going to maybe, again, uh, seeing Zen on base. And, you know, Zen is a DeFi protocol, which is great to see. So that brings in uh, DeFi capabilities to base. So that's also cool to see as well, too. But again, not really much of a meaningful impact in terms of price for the base, as we've seen previously. Um they it's done the same exact thing right it, it completely you know started to have these swings to the downside as people continue to essentially mint so really nothing has changed guys it's the same old stuff as you can see when zen comes out you get this big spill to the downside as more liquidity comes available you know people are essentially selling it 
either from some sort of profit or you know liquidity provider fee in terms of that but other than that i mean this is what we're we're saying just let's go back to price and, and talk about price for uh, for a second here so again zen on the four hourly and six hourly uh did have a chance to actually put in maybe a chance testing to the 55 vma on the 12 hourly which completely actually failed at it right uh we came back retested the all-time lows or close to the all-time lows for zen as you can see based off of this guys um and uh, what we were looking at in particular, what I wanted to see Zen is, is to actually hold uh, this key critical area around the 740. Okay, if we could have held the 740, we were, we were kind of slowly putting this nice, you know, uptrend movement to the upside. However, again, we fell below it, as you can see, the 21 EMA acting as a resistance on the 6 and 8 hourly. But the key target area that we really want to get above is the uh, 55 EMA on the 12 hourly. If we can actually get above that, then what I do highly see Zen really getting above this area of 8, uh, 870, guys. So that is the area that I'm watching, okay, that I want really Zen to get above. Now, with our previous strategy we've been talking about on the 12 hourly, this video is actually getting a bit long, but just coming over on the 12 hourly we did see the conditions actually being met for that now i as i said previously in terms of that what would invalidate this particular trade is anything uh a closure above the 55 ema until then until then i still do see zen really coming back uh below the all-time lows okay really i do believe that because based off the previous iteration 100 percent of this had 100% of a strike rate means that look it's a high probability that 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 could be the case and you know us here at crypto bros we take the probabilistic case right and that's how we trade guys but again i'll leave you off with this i hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up until next time bros stay profitable